So I will deliberately scare myself into using improvisation sometimes when I feel I'm losing my chops. Hmm. And I did that when I did um, the show about me and my father going to um, my father's last reunion of his um, RAF squadron. Mm. I improvised that. that in front of the audience. Mm. And so that was partly to scare myself into still using this because I had been a writer writer for a while. And you worked with Daniel McIver. Was that the first time you worked with Daniel McIver? Yes. Okay. But that was me knowing we were going to do something, me telling him that I was going to make this trip. Mm -hmm. And then me saying, okay, I've got a wild idea that I would come back after the trip and right off the plane, improvise the story of the trip. Okay. In front of an audience. Okay. And I did that, partly because I knew that when you come off a trip, you've got an hour in you. You've got an hour and a half in you, right? right. So yeah. what happened on your trip? And <laughs> you usually have that ready to right. spill out. Right. Yeah. So we did that. I arranged for there to be an audience, totally free audience. Everyone knew there was nothing written down, although yeah. I had like some notes. Where? And yeah. I improvised the show, and that was what Daniel and I then worked on refining it as the last dog of war. Was that, where, where did you perform it? Was I it performed here? it here. Okay. And you literally uh, got off the plane. Yes, uh, it was actually the next day. Okay, but seriously though. Daniel right. and I spent two hours, mm -hmm. him cobbling together things, he'd never seen anything. Right. So he'd say, how does it begin? I go, okay, it begins with a dream. Okay, fine. How long is that? I don't know. <laughs> five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to tell the story about how we almost didn't go to the reunion and we actually got kicked out of the reunion. Okay, how long is that? I don't know. <laughs> 20 minutes? Okay, 20 minutes. And he mm -hmm. actually took these sections and wrote them down. Mm -hmm. and I had a clock on stage. Right. Never looked at it. And the thing was an hour and a half, which is what I wanted it to be. It was just one of those things. But I deliberate, that was a few years ago, but I, I wanted to scare myself into still using mm -hmm. that part of myself. Mm -hmm. It's like there are some things that the actor knows that the writer doesn't. Yep. And that work is often more immediate. It may look less fancy on the page, mm -hmm. but it, it, it has that immediacy that the writer's brain or removal from that process with the audience sometimes isn't able to achieve. You know what I find actually really frustrating? I don't want to go too much on a, on a tangent, but sometimes like, you're, you, you, especially if a show, if a play comes out of performance, you know, or rehearsal or, 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 or a collective, you write it down and then you hand it maybe to an artistic director to go, well, it's been a big hit in Regina, read it. And the artistic director goes, what the hell is this? Right. You know, and That's it's like, right. oh, you got to realize when he puts the chicken above his head, they realize it, 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 that it's a they, thing. They, yeah. People cry, you'll understand. And, and, you, and you don't see it. And that is, you know, again, part of my background mm -hmm. is the non-literary play mm -hmm. that is theater. Yeah. It's theater. It's yeah. never going to end up in the English, although some things have it. And Maggie and Pierre has ended up in the English department. Yeah. Yeah. And, but this, is, this was my training, right? Because the written stuff was so dry mm -hmm. and uninteresting and intellectual and academic mm -hmm. that there were no plays to, to do. You had to mm -hmm. make them up. Mm -hmm. And although this created writers like, like uh, uh, George Walker, who definitely wanted to write them, he wasn't mm -hmm. an improv guy. Yeah. But out of the stream that I went into, you know, there's something about those plays. And when I do Last Dog of War, I just, it, it just some things just work like crazy. And the improvisational stuff is often funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know why that is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, doesn't look the same way in the page. I'm about to republish Maggie and Pierre and The Duchess. And I mm -hmm. know one is more literary than the other. Mm -hmm. And one was made up on its feet more than the other. Let's talk about the Duchess. Ah, yes. So, how did you get to? Uh, 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 what inspired you for your play? I honestly Duchess? don't know. I ended up getting this book about Wallace Simpson's jewels, and it was a summer that I was kind of broke. Mm -hmm. I spent the summer kind of lying on my bed. There was no work. I wasn't looking for work. Hmm. Reading about this stuff, and I just. Again, she was a, a woman with a very bad reputation. Mm -hmm. She's considered a Nazi. She was uh, uh, rich, snobby, whatever. And I just, I was interested in that whole world. Mm 
-hmm. I can I can kind of speak that British language. Mm -hmm. And I was interested in the world, uh, always interested in the Second World War because of my dad, mm -hmm. pre-Second World War. I was interested, all of a sudden it was like royalty and jewels and, mm -hmm. and also the relationship of the king and the land, all this ancient stuff went through it. Um, kingship, mm -hmm. what is that, you know? And, and, and it also led me into um, British mythology, which mm -hmm. is always a touch point for me. And so I made this wild thing, you know, and we did do some improvisation at first, but then I, I pretty well took it away and I did some mm -hmm. monologues as improvisation, but it was pretty well written. And uh, I'm going to confront you about this on video. Go ahead. Not on film. Go ahead. The first incarnation that I became aware of yes. had some beautiful music mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And music that, and, and you were, and can I call it a musical? Can I say it was a musical or is it a mu Play with kind music, music kind of okay. thing, whatever that distinction is. But it had is. like yeah. Yeah. many, many songs and some of them were just fantastic and great yeah. storytelling pieces yeah. and, you know, great pieces of theater. And then it disappeared. Why? What happened? I think that I was either going to go to Banff mm -hmm. and really make it a musical. Mm -hmm. in which the high points of scenes were sung, mm -hmm. which I didn't know how to do. Because mm -hmm. we had uh, songs in um, the spaces between the scenes, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? and, and Andrew, of course, you played Noel Coward. Oh, that's right. I forgot that's about right. that. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You were in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, hmm. And so, um, and I didn't know how to make it better Okay. without giving over my vision of it. Right. And I hate musical theater, usually. No, but sometimes that's the best person to yeah, do it. That's right. Because that that's way, right. you're breaking rules. You're opening up different approaches to theater. And I was really excited about the I idea know. of like a Paul Thompson, Linda Griffiths approach to yes to a musical and what would happen. And if I you just went further with it. there was more I wanted to do, and I didn't know how to do it within that structure. Okay. You know, and mm -hmm. I felt trapped by it, mm -hmm. and I wanted to kick it out, and I wanted to tell the story without music because I didn't know how to tell a story with music. Right. Yeah. And I did a rewrite of that play recently, and it was on at UBC, mm -hmm. and she just wove just enough music there right. that the play needs, and right. it was music in between and in the transitions. Right. So it may have finally come back to itself. Right. I don't know, but I wanted. I almost wanted a kind of. Grotowski-ish mm -hmm. madness and darkness, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find the I couldn't find the way in. And mm -hmm. also, if I was going to play it, I would have had to sing. But that, that that's like I was actually exiting. I need to be in it or feel my way through it as an actor. Right. Uh, the writer was completely taking over, and right. I I didn't need to be in it by the time it went on. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. I and I don't need to be in them. I get so nervous when I'm not in them. It's weird. Oh, I know. It's awful. It's what is awful. that? I when know. You, when you're in it, and it's opening night, and it's like, oh, hey, all right. You have something to do. Something to do. No, yeah. no. It's awful not to be in it. Oh. So, I mean, all of this is sort of part of the identity of writer emerging. So, mm -hmm. you know, Maggie and Pierre is published. So your, your improvisations are taped and written down, mm -hmm. and then it's writing. So this idea of being a writer is, is strange because of this whole idea of improvisation and is it writing or is it not? You know, it mm. is writing, we know this, but often there are actors who can improvise who are never going to sit down at a typewriter. Yeah. That is their skill, they can mm. do it that way. And what I've learned is I can do it both ways and it's actually cheaper to be a writer because no one needs to watch. But if you're yeah. improvising, at least one person has to watch. Right.